and welcome to our new episode of EU Deal after Brexit. Today we will talk about the right of asylum seekers after Brexit. I received today Jamal Kazel live from Brussels and Romain de Rogel, which is here to talk about this subject. How are you? I'm fine, and you? I'm great, thank you. So tell me, Romain, what will be the impact of Brexit on the asylum seekers? Well, first, I would like to thank you, Matthias, for receiving me. And I'm really glad to present the study Jamayana conducted about asylum seekers after Brexit. So we first decided to take this topic because asylum seekers are really different than migrants. Um, it's important to define the subject. So an asylum seeker is a person asking to a third state, so a third country, to protect them from persecution. So it is very um, important to different, differentiate, <laughs> to make the difference between those two terms. So we need to know that the European Union has a common policy in order to um, manage the crisis we lived through these years. And this policy um, is exp uh, has expired due to Brexit. So we studied what was the legal consequence of this, uh, this situation and we studied first EU law and in particular the Dublin 3 regulation. Well, thank you. So what is the Dublin 3 regulation? Because I feel like our viewers don't really know what it is. So can you explain to us, please? Well, I think my colleague is going to. Okay. Jamai? to impede uh, travel of refugees between EU countries with the intent of going to a specific final destination, as well as when no EU state has taken responsibility for an asylum claim. claim. So a member state can thus uh, proceed to transfer an asylum seeker to another member state if it can ascertain that the asylum seeker had already registered elsewhere under the EURODAC regulation. It also sets out other criteria, which include the family unity, which is considered to be above all other, others. If you are an asylum seeker, you can seek asylum in another state if, an, if it can be proven that you have family members in that state. So thanks to this regulation, some refugee families dispose of a possibility of reunion with their families where otherwise they might not have had. In this way, the parents can join the children who have been granted uh, the refugee status if they are minors. So the regulation has proven rather useful in the matter of regulating uh, the flow of asylum seekers towards uh, and within Europe as it prevents asylum seekers from moving freely from one country to another and also avoids um, the multiple applications for asylum by one person. Okay, so it's a really important tool and is it still valid? No, no, this regulation expired when the UK decided to just leave the EU. It does not longer apply uh, here. Um, but the UK wanted to continue to apply it and they offer that during the negotiation. However, the EU declined the offer because um, they are working on a new uh, migration policy. Uh, so. Um, yeah, there were no mention of any immigration um, topic on the Brexit arrangement. So we have here a legal uh, gap mm -hmm. and we decided then to study more national law to know what is expected uh, for this situation. Okay, well, let's talk about the UK then. So what are the domestic uh, provisions which regards asylum? Well, my colleague will answer that too. <laughs> so, um, because of the refusal of a new agreement that was based on a replica of the Dublin 3 regulation by the EU, uh, Britain will, of course, lose its power of resorting to this provision, uh, thereupon sending asylum seekers back to other EU member states. So, the UK plans to impo impose uh, the enforced return of migrants to their country of origin. Uh, in regard to UK case law of the Immigration and Asylum Act of 1999 and regarding asylum seekers. So this qualifies of a more uh, delicate situation as their status is expressed as fleeing a political or personal danger. 
So the government has formulated in this matter that dis the discussion of a own policy is undergoing. And for now, there is no provision that regards uh, the remaining in the country while the application of asylum is being processed. So this clearly shows a lack of clarity and details in regards to the protection of the asylum seekers while this right is guaranteed under the 2003 um, Reception Conditions Directive and the 2005 Asylum Procedures Directive. So the UK's immigration rules emphasizes the concept of first country of asylum as geographically Britain is not placed in a way which can generate, generally be considered as first place of entry. Uh, this seems convenient in controlling the immigration flow of the, of the United Kingdom. So consequently, uh, the Home Office could decide that an asylum seeker is ineligible for asylum. Yes, but what about human rights, Roman? So, like, would the new legislation impact the human rights of the asylum seekers? Well, it is true that in a European point of view, the UK withdrew of the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union. However, we cannot forget that the UK is still a party to the Council of Europe and also the European Convention of Human Rights. This is the main instrument about human rights in the continent. But we cannot also ignore that this convention does not mention any article about asylum right. So this question, the, uh, the, was, the answer was given by the judges of the European Court of Human Rights and they stated that even if Article 1 that sets up a territorial limit, uh, even if there is a territorial limit, any human beings in Europe could rely on this charter, could have the, their human rights protected and I, I mean it's obvious. So Article 2 as the right to live or Article 3, uh, the prohibition of torture, still can apply. So if you are an Iceland seeker, you can rely on this convention. So human rights are protected, but the main instrument in this field is the Geneva Convention on the Refugee Rights of 1951. Well, we, we talk and we are hearing a lot about this Geneva Convention, so yes. what can you tell us about it? Well, first, this is a United Nations Convention, so it is a more global scope. And this convention has the main principle, which is the principle that is uh, given in every nat national legislation, which is the non refoulement principle that is prohibiting any state to just deport a person asking for asylum in their countries to face uh, persecution or to fear for their lives. So this principle is really, really a common stone in international law, but also this convention is um, highlighting also the cooperation at the regional level between the states in order to provide the more effective protection of asylum seekers. Well, but what's the relevance of this text in the current situation, in the current like, topic we're talking about? Well, of course, I understand. The question is not to know whether the UK will leave uh, this convention because it is obvious that no, it's still a party. But it is relevant here because the EU had a community law on migration that respected this convention. And as this um, this regulation, this Dublin III regulation and all migration law of the EU does no longer apply, then we can see that the cooperation between the states is endangered and here we have maybe a lack of this cooperation that is truly needed in the crisis Europe is uh, living. So we have a gap, we could say. Yeah, yeah, of course. As a consequence, Jamai, what would be the solution to tackle this issue? Well, the UK is confronted uh, with an urgent need to resolve to bilateral treaties, so especially considering uh, what is happening with asylum seekers in Calais. Uh, the, co the cooperation uh, between France and the UK has long uh, subsisted throughout the Sangat Protocol of 1991 and the Treaty of Le Touquet of 2003. Uh, this allowed for both of these countries to carry out such immigration controls at each border's territories. 
So for now, further phases of negotiations of engagements uh, between these countries are still enduring. And do you think that those new bilateral agreements would be successful? Uh, well, the effectiveness of these uh, agreements is, of course, put into question. It would need uh, considerable amounts of genuine efforts and solidarity between the two countries in order for this cooperation to work, uh, whilst taking uh, into account the priority of the protection of the human rights of these asylum seekers. So thereby, um, multiple amendments of the 2000 additional Senga Protocol and Le Touquet Treaty shall be made. Uh, there is numerous criticism uh, that these bilateral agreements tend to prioritize border control instead of raising humanitarian conditions. So for now, we will have to wait and see in a few months in order to get a clear step back of the situation. So, Romain Jamay, thank you very much for your expertise on this subject. Thank you, Matthias. And I would like to thank our viewers for this interview and for having seen this interview. And so if you want to see more of our videos, you can go on the Facebook page, Media Lab, or on the YouTube channel. Thank you very much.